Earlier today, I caught up with the federal Liberal MP for the seat of Barker. That's on the South Australian side of the border. I caught up with him while he was in the Riverland district. Tony Passon, thanks for joining us. Of course, your electorate stops at the Victorian border. Federal electorates don't cross state borders. So you're on the good side, if you like. It's the Victorians that are being discriminated against, but many South Australians on your side are also paying a price because of this really tough border closure. A really heavy price, Chris. Obviously, uh, communities all across the border zone in South Australia are service communities that are just the other side of the border and not only are they missing that custom, there are often employees in critical services like education and health that live on the Victorian side of the border which won't be able to be crossed as of tomorrow, which seems a little nonsensical in circumstances where we've got a perfectly effective border zone and measures that operate today uh, that members of the community are being quite willing to meet the inconvenience of. We've spoken to a number of people, examples when it comes to study, to health services, education, the works, families being torn apart. These rules are just too strict, aren't they? The South Australians are imposing too strict a border on their Victorian colleagues. Well, the sense the community has right now is these new hardened measures uh, are a solution in search of a problem. Uh, the rules that apply today, which are to be hardened tomorrow, are that within the 40-kilometre border zone, provided that citizens go and have a COVID test every seven days, they can cross across the border. And those measures have been quite effective, very effective, and they've been met with kind of the support of the community. The concern right now is that notwithstanding the success of those measures and that the fact that the Victorian caseload seems to be reducing, we're now having to meet even stricter requirements, which in many cases, almost all cases, means absolutely no cross-border travel. So why is the South Australian government doing this? You're a federal Liberal MP, part of the federal Liberal government. You have a state Liberal government in South Australia. Why are your Liberal colleagues doing this? Have you complained directly to the Premier? Um, certainly complaints have been made to the Premier's office uh, and my state colleagues up and down the border are sharing my frustration because, of course, our electorate offices have been inundated with idiosyncratic inquiries. Um, some cases, Chris, that would, like, melt your heart in terms of the need for critical health services, the need to um, support um, uh, elderly family members across the border. So we've been seeking to kind of facilitate these solutions. But to be honest, the sense in the community right now is... Uh, one of confusion and anxiety. They don't quite understand why we're having to ramp up these measures right at this time where we're seeing the caseloads, even today, continuing to reduce. Um, and that's a real challenge. I just feel that we've got ourselves in a situation now where um, um, risk-adverse decisions are being made without regard for the economic consequences. And those consequences, I've got to tell you, on the border zone are being felt hard. Well, we're supposed to be all in this together. We've got a national cabinet, but we seem to be driving Australians apart along state borders. Well, um, you know, Chris, that the Prime Minister has written to the relevant premiers, including the South Australian Premier, encouraging them to consider these idiosyncratic circumstances and do whatever they can to ensure that we create cross-border travel, that we don't end up with circumstances where very real hardship is visited on our community. I hope that these issues are considered very carefully. I hope special consideration is given to these very difficult and special cases. But um, the solution here cannot be to lock communities away from each other. One of the real consequences here that I don't think people who don't live in cross border communities understand is that by forcing Victorians who would otherwise help obtain their health services and other services from a place like Mount Gambier or Pinaroo, further north of the border, the, the challenge when you stop them coming into South Australia is they'll move back into Victoria where the disease load is more prevalent and bring potentially the disease closer back to the border, which is much more risky for South Australian cross-border communities than if we allow, under strict arrangements, including testing every day, every seven days, arrangements for, for uh, cross-border travel. What about the situation where South Australia is looking at bringing overseas students into the state again on 14 days quarantine, yet they won't even let Victorians 
back into South Australia to complete their studies, even if they're prepared to do 14 days quarantine? Well, that's the challenge. I, Chris, I don't have a problem with foreign students returning to South Australia, provided they meet the 14-day quarantine requirement, provided they meet the cost of that, of course. But equally, that offer should be available to Victorian students. Um, I've got a number of um, Year 12 students in Mount Gambier who have had to be sent home from boarding houses in Victoria, and I just think that's uh, particularly unfair. They had to make that move before um, the Victorian government moved to um, close uh, education up to Year 12. But I just think it, we need some consistency across all of this right now. These measures uh, are important. They've been put in place for an important reason. They're proportionate and measured to this point. I think the decision to go further, um, particularly against the background where the Victorian uh, caseload is in decline, I think is uh, a step too far. And as I said earlier, uh, my community thinks very much that this is a solution in search of a problem. Thanks for joining us, Tony.